Hypothyroidism is a growing epidemic, yet nearly 90% of patients who have it are undiagnosed. Further, environmental toxins can make it much harder to achieve a true diagnosis. A patient could actually have hypothyroidism, yet because of several toxins, their test results can come out normal. In this clip, you'll hear Dr. Mark Starr discuss how toxins affect proper diagnosis, treatment options for patients with hypothyroidism, and how dental health is connected to the struggle between toxins and thyroid malfunction. He is interviewed by Dr. Ruth Bozinski, President and Co-Founder of the National Institute for the Clinical Application of Behavioral Medicine. My guest tonight is Dr. Mark Starr. He is a physician and author of the book Hypothyroidism Type 2, The Epidemic. So, Mark, welcome to the call. Let's talk about, you You started in our introduction, you alluded to the idea that environmental toxins play a significant role in hypothyroidism. Let's, let's flesh that out some. Sure. Um, there's some wonderful studies that came out in the 1990s showing uh, scores and scores of common environmental toxins block thyroid function. You know, the phthalates that cause plastic to be flexible uh, leach into the water and block thyroid function. PCBs, dioxins, mercury, arsenic, or cadmium, aluminum. But one of the main offenders is fluoride. You know, the uh, halides are in one column in the periodic chart, and at the top of the halide column is fluorine. So it has a higher affinity to the iodine receptors than does iodine. And uh, one of my good friends is named Jerry Tennant. He has research in his new book showing that T4 can be fake T4, basically. It can be replaced by the iodine that uh, attaches to the tyrosine. Um, it is not iodine. It's fluorine and or bromine or chlorine, which are all above uh, iodine in the periodic chart, so they have a higher affinity to the receptor. And we're being exposed to fluorine and chlorine, for instance, on a daily basis in our water here in the United States. And there are lots of naturally occurring areas where the fluorine is high in the water. So he thinks that's uh, one of the main reasons you see so many people with normal thyroid levels. And not only does it uh, screw up the thyroid hormone, it damages the thyroid gland. It causes uh, infiltration. It looks a whole lot like Hashimoto's disease. The fluoride that's in the water is masking the test's ability to pick up hypothyroidism. That's correct. And it's also at the same time harming the thyroid? That's correct. Mm -hmm. It's bad news. Would you take any different kind of approach than treating someone with any other kind of thyroid problem? Well, pretty much everyone is toxic these days, and I, I often have to start with trying to help detoxify the patient and get their liver working again, and their gut is extremely important. I would say a majority of the people who come to see me, I have something called a bioelectric impedance analysis device, a BIA, and I'm sure Dr. Tennant has that in his book as well. And you can measure the phase angle, which is in large part a measurement of how much good fat is in the body. When you have a leaky gut, because the gut is inflamed from food allergies and mercury toxicity and so on, you can't absorb things properly, and you're allergic to almost everything you eat. So you have to detoxify those patients. The teeth, is a, uh, the, the dentition is a huge part of uh, how I help people get well because mercury is extremely toxic. It's not just the mercury itself, but there are 20 different frequencies associated with the different forms of mercury. And even if you get rid of most of the mercury, you still may have the frequencies. And it takes a whole body wash with procaine to get rid of those mercury frequencies. You do the procaine wash with a gauze and procaine on it uh, once a week or once every two weeks for six or seven months to get rid of. Uh, it helps detoxify the body. There's more to learn about hypothyroidism. NICEBM's newest teleseminar series, Clinical Applications of Mind-Body Medicine, New Thinking About Stress and the Remarkable Power of Psychoneuroimmunology, covers this topic and more. Sign up for this free series at www.nicabm.com slash teleseminar slash 2010 slash PNI. There will also be interviews on adrenal fatigue, chronic pain, sleep disorders, and more. Or visit our blog, www.nicabm.com slash NICABM blog to learn more. This December, NICABM will host its 22nd International Psychology of Health, Immunity, and Disease Conference in Hilton Head, South Carolina. Practitioners will be attending from all over the country. Dr. Mark Starr will be attending the conference to discuss thyroid malfunction in his workshop, an epidemic 
of unrecognized hypothyroidism, the role of environmental toxins on a healthy thyroid. For more information, please visit www.nicbm.com slash DECCON10.